Hi, my name's Cameron. I'm coming to you today on behalf of my friends over at Gig Performer to give you a brief overview of what Gig Performer is and what it can do for you. We're going to start completely from scratch today. If you're a beginner, this will give you a basic overview of digital audio and getting started with Gig Performer. We're going to go over exactly what Gig Performer does, what gear you need to run it, how you can find and add your own plugins, and how you can control those plugins without touching your computer. Let's jump right in. So what is Gig Performer and who can use it? Gig Performer is a premium live performance host that gives you the ability to control and automate your virtual instruments, effects, and your hardware, allowing you to focus on your playing, giving your audience the best performance possible. It's used by gigging musicians, hobbyists, front of house engineers, and professionals alike. So who is Gig Performer for? Really, it's for anyone who makes music. So what do you need to use Gig Performer? At the bare minimum, you're gonna need a computer, and that's Mac OS or Windows. Today, I'll be showing you examples on a Mac, but all of this will apply to you Windows users as well. You'll also want an audio interface. This will allow you to get your microphones or instruments into Gig Performer, and it'll allow you to get your audio out of Gig Performer into, say, a PA system. And in my opinion, if you really want the full benefit of Gig Performer, you'll want to have some MIDI controllers. These are going to allow you to control instruments and parameters inside of Gig Performer without ever having to touch your mouse. This is a necessity if you're playing live. It would take many videos to go over the endless types of MIDI controllers out there, but a standard MIDI controller like this will allow you to play your virtual instruments and control parameters inside of Gig Performer. Also pretty common are foot controllers that will allow you to control Gig Performer using your feet. I even like to use my iPad to send MIDI messages over Wi-Fi to control Gig Performer. It, the possibilities are endless. I'll show you how to set up some MIDI controllers in a bit, but first we need some stuff to control, like plugins. What is a plugin though? Audio plugins come in two types, instruments and effects. They either produce sounds, like a virtual synth for example, or they affect a sound, like a reverb or an EQ. We're going to oversimplify this a bit, but just as a quick overview, audio plugins come in several formats. The most common are called VST and AU, or audio units. VST plugins are usually compatible with both Mac and Windows, but audio units only run on a Mac. Uh, but most major plugin manufacturers will provide both types, and there's not a real difference that you'll notice. Functionally, for you, they install just like any other software, and since Gig Performer is compatible with VST, VST3, and AU plugins, you don't need to worry much about compatibility. They should just be automatically detected by Gig Performer. But every plugin manufacturer is different, so you may want to double check compatibility. For instance, watch out for older 32 bit plugins that don't function on modern 64 bit computers, or plugins that only work on Intel Macs and not the modern M series Macs. But where can you get plugins? There are many free options out there with a simple Google search. We also have a great blog post on the Gig Performer website that can point you in the right direction. There's a link in the description below. I highly recommend that you check out our partners page as well, where you can find some great plugins. Again, that link is also down below. Uh, there's also a ton of cool open source projects out there. There's also many paid plugins out there from reputable manufacturers. You can find these in online stores like Sweetwater, or again, through a simple Google search, you can find them through the plugin manufacturer's websites. As for what these plugins can do, again, it would take many videos to dive into all the types of audio plugins. But for instance, in just my rig, I have some amp modelers, guitar effects, synthesizers, EQs, reverbs, you name it. The plugin rabbit hole is a super deep one, so be careful. Now that we have our basics down, what Gig Performer is, what we need to run it, and how to find plugins to use in it, let's get started. First thing, you're going to want to download and install Gig Performer. It's available from gigperformer.com. There's also a free 14-day trial on there if you want to experiment a bit before you buy. Just follow the super easy install process, launch Gig Performer, activate your license, and you're good to go. Once Gig Performer is activated, the first thing we're going to want to configure is our audio interface. So we're gonna to go to Options and Audio Setup. Here's where we can see all our available audio interfaces. Most interfaces these days are plug and play, but if you're not seeing your interface here, you might need to install some additional software from the manufacturer. You can check the instructions that came with your interface for that. But once you see your interface here, go ahead and select it. And when you do that, you'll be able to see your individual inputs and outputs and select them or deselect them as you like. 
Below that, we have some settings. We have the sample rate and the audio buffer size. Sample rate is how often the interface takes a sample of your audio. Most everything you hear is recorded in 44.1 Hz, or in other words, your interface is sampling the audio 44,000 times a second. Listed here will be any sampling rate your interface supports, but if you're in doubt, set this to 44.1 and forget about it. There are higher sampling rates, and while you won't hear an audible difference, there is a noticeable decrease in latency. That is, how long it is between when the audio is created and when you hear it. This is super important for musicians. Imagine hitting a key on your keyboard and it took three seconds before you heard anything. It'd be totally unusable. That's also where a buffer size comes into play. Because your computer needs time to process the audio signal, there will always be some latency, even if it's unperceivable. When we change our buffer size, we're telling our computer how many samples to set aside for processing at any time. A lower buffer size will mean lower latency. However, it also means the computer has to work faster and harder to process that audio, which means a higher CPU load. So our real goal becomes setting the buffer size as low as possible without overloading our CPU. This would take a little experimenting on your system. If you notice pops and clicks as you play, try increasing the buffer size. If you're not getting pops or clicks, but you are noticing latency, try lowering the buffer size. To get started, try starting at a safe 256 samples and adjusting from there as needed. We have a great blog post and video diving more into this. We'll link both below. While we're here, we also want to make sure our MIDI controllers are configured correctly. This is as simple as going over the MIDI port tab and options and making sure all your controllers are enabled. Just like audio interfaces, most of these are plug and play, but you may need to install some additional software before it appears in here. Real quick, we're also going to want to make sure our audio plugins are installed correctly. We can do that by going over to Window and Plugin Manager. This is where we can confirm Gig Performer can see our plugins. By default, Gig Performer will auto scan for new plugins on every startup, but if you're not seeing your plugins here, try rescanning, and if still no luck, double check the instructions from the manufacturer. Now that we have audio coming in and out of Gig Performer, we have our MIDI controllers connected and we have our plugins activated, we can dive into Gig Performer itself. I'm going to give you a quick overview of the interface and then we'll build a rig together from scratch. First, we'll start with the heart of Gig Performer, the rack space. What are rack spaces? A rack space is a collection of interconnected plugins and it's how you organize your rig inside of Gig Performer. For instance, I have one here with my guitar rig and another rack space here with my bass rig. Rack spaces are how you can quickly access a different set of sounds all with a single button press. Each rack space also contains one or more panels, which are completely customizable interfaces that you can control your plugins directly with widgets. So you never have to fumble around with plugin interfaces while you're creating music or playing live. You can switch from one rack space to another with your computer directly or via MIDI. And rack spaces switch without delay, even mid bar, so you never miss a beat. We also have a special rack space called the global rack space. As the name suggests, it's just a rack space that is present no matter which rack space is activated. And it can send and receive audio to different rack spaces. You can use this in a number of different ways, but I like to use it as a virtual mixer and control panel that's always present no matter which rack space I'm in. Rack spaces also contain variations. A variation is essentially a rack space preset, which contains the same plugins and connections, but with different widget settings. You can instantly change multiple settings and activate multiple effects, all with one button press. So for instance, instead of tap dancing on your pedal board when it's time for your big solo, you can hit one button and instantly turn on multiple effects at once. And like rack spaces, variations can also be accessed via MIDI. All this is contained in a .gig file. A gig file is just what's created when you save one or multiple rack spaces, allowing you to easily transfer your entire rig between computers in one single file. I like to take this one step further and save this to cloud storage so my entire rig is accessible anywhere. There are many bundled gig files included with Gig Performer that will give you some great examples of what's possible, but you should also check out our community forum, which is very active, on gigperformer.com for great examples from our community. So let's create a new gig file together. We'll do that by going to File, New, and New Empty Gig File. This will start us with a blank rack space. 
We can navigate around Gig Performer here between our panels, edit mode, and wiring. Here we also have our global rack space and our set list view, which I'll go over in just a little bit. Let's start with the wiring view. The wiring view is where we add our plugins and connect them. It's also where we can connect MIDI interfaces and set our audio inputs and outputs. Here in the wiring view, I can see my input interface and its inputs, and I can see my output interface and its outputs. Unlike your DAW, there's no scary routing or matrix grids to learn. If I want to send my guitar input, for me that's input 2, to my outputs, all I do is literally click and drag, and just like that, I can hear my guitar. And possibly a top 5 feature of Gig Performer for me, with wiring activity, I can easily see the signal flow of the audio. Now let's add a plugin. To add a plugin, we're going to simply right click and we can choose from one of the many internal plugins built into Gig Performer or one of our installed plugins. We'll start by adding a plugin I have here called Helix, which is a guitar modeler. Now we'll see the plugin pop up, but how do we use it? It's really as simple as wiring it up just like this. And just like that, my guitar is now being processed through Helix. And I can easily add another plugin, even from a different manufacturer, just as simply. So let's say I want to put some reverb on there. I'll add this reverb from Valhalla. And a little pro tip for you, if you click, drag, and hold shift over these wires, Kick Performer will even automatically wire it up for you. So now i got a good sound going, but how can I control this? Because, for instance, if I want to change the amount of that reverb, I'd have to go into the wiring view, find the plugin, open it up, find the parameter I want to change. I certainly can't be doing all that while I'm playing. Gig Performer can make this so much easier for us. So let's jump into the edit view. The edit view is going to allow us to create a custom interface for our plugins so that we can quickly access any parameter without all that hassle. There are all sorts of widgets here like buttons, sliders, labels, you name it. To add a widget, it's as simple as dragging and dropping. So for that reverb, I want to control the mix of it. I'm going to drag a knob over into the panel here, and when I do that, you'll see widget properties and mapping open up. This is where I could tell Gig Performer what I want this knob to control and how I want to control it. So under mapping, I'm going to tell Gig Performer that I want to control this reverb plugin, and then I'm going to tell it I want to control the mix. And now when I turn this knob, you can see that I'm controlling the mix, all without ever opening the plugin. But my problem isn't really solved. It'd be great if I could control this while I play my guitar, like with a MIDI expression pedal, for instance, like I have in my feet here. Since we've already configured our MIDI device, it's as easy as going to edit, selecting our widget. We'll go to MIDI, hit learn, and I'm going to move my pedal, and just like that, I'm controlling the reverb with my foot. And, but maybe even that's too much. Maybe I just want reverb during one part of a song, and I want to focus on, you know, getting it exactly just right. This is where we can use a variation. I can have one variation with the reverb off, and I can make another variation with the reverb all the way up, and I can switch between them instantly and this is also controllable via MIDI. So that was a super basic example, but hopefully you can see how powerful this combination of features can be and how it can be expanded to fit your process. For instance, here is my current rig, which has all my synths, guitar effects, and even my bass rig in it. And it's all controlled via MIDI pedal boards and some iPad sending MIDI messages. In my rig, I also like to utilize the set list feature which allows you to pre-map your songs to instantly switch between different rack spaces and variations, all with a single button press. This has been my guitar rig for years now, and not only is it stable, consistent, and reliable, but it fits in my backpack, so I can have my entire rig with me, even at a Holiday Inn in Tallahassee. Now, I use examples with how I use Kick Performer, mainly with guitar. But hopefully you can see the possibilities on how it can help simultaneously simplify and expand your rig for your specific use case. There are a lot of great videos on this channel diving much deeper into Gig Performer because we honestly really only scratch the surface. Gig Performer also really has an active community over at the forum on gigperformer.com. It's an amazing resource, especially as you get started. 
You should also consider following Gig Performer on Facebook and Instagram, where we'll keep posting tips, tricks, and some rack spaces from the community. And if you just want to give it a try for yourself, there's a free 14-day trial available on gigperformer.com. Have fun.